This is my long-term review video of the Revo Point Morocco 3D scanner. I'm starting with a brief unboxing of the uh, large turntable. This is, is for standing people on, holds up to 200 kilos, and the Morocco scanner itself. I'm skipping through this a little bit because it's featured in uh, another video I did on the Morocco. It comes in this uh, lovely pouch. It, it ships with the accessories in the pouch, but the pouch is designed for the Morocco scanner. All very nicely packaged and nice quality. And these are the various instructions and accessories, including marker cloths for standing things on to scan them, and marker dots for feet objects with less features, topper for the turntable, little statuette and the power brick and the scanner itself. The scanner's got a nice chunky feel to it. And there it is. You can see it's got a lot of cameras on the front. That's because it's designed to both scan smaller objects at close range and larger objects more distant. It's got a full colour touch screen on the back. Here's the turntable in operation, comes with the remote control and that's got a little stool on the top that I made for Maker Central so that the uh, subjects we were scanning could sit down to be scanned. Before Makers Central, I scanned Nick Zametti, who was the founder of Makers Central. I used Shaper 3D to create this bust. And here it is, 3D printed. That's with the supports removed. I also did this Hulk version of Nick and did a little presentation box for him. The Nickredible Hulk. It's got a bit of shadow foam in there. This was a selfie scan I did. My wife calls it my death mask. And here's uh, me and Neil Collins at Maker Central on the Revo Point stand. This is me scanning Neil's big cuddly dog toy. And also scanning Joel from Integza. This was the 3D model I produced of him. You can see how good that is. I purchased this giant King Kong toy off eBay. This is me scanning it. This is on a smaller turntable, obviously. But it's very good, the Morocco, because you are holding it directly and looking at the screen which is lined up with what you're scanning. Much easier to coordinate and keep your scanning distance true. I ended up scanning King Kong in several stages scanning different parts of him and merging all the different scans. I got a very good result on this. This is the uh, the toy as it is scanned. Came out very very nicely. I then used the Morocco in selfie mode with the screen flipped up. And this is me pulling a King Kong face and trying to uh, scan myself. It's actually quite difficult to do, and yes, I do look an idiot. After uh, several attempts, this was about as good as it was going to get. So uh, it's easier if you get someone else to do it, really. I'm using hole filling here. I've selected all and applying that. It'll also fill across the back of the face to make it more of a solid object. And there we are, in all my ugliness. And I've merged that with my King Kong toy to create this sort of Sasquatch figure with my face on it. And there I am printed out in true hideous style. I then thought we'd better scan some smaller objects, and this is a very detailed object. This is a, a rabbit skull. And I've mounted the Morocco 
on a tripod for this and using the turntable. You can see I was using the touch screen on the back. Very, very nice to use. Very, very simple. I've turned the skull over so I'm scanning the underside. I scanned it at several angles and I scanned the lower jaw. And this was after I'd combined the different scans. Here they are merged into one object. Overlap detection, removing unwanted data. Checking for little islands, isolated bits, these little anomalies that you inevitably get, especially on small objects like this. So we just delete those. And then we're ready to mesh. This took a little bit of time. But, and there's the finished model. Very pleased with how that came out. You can see the detail that that's picked up. Here I'm just doing some hole filling. And then I put it into Shaper 3D and I actually cut it in half and used the good halves of the upper and lower jaw to create a whole skull with no missing bits or broken bits. Here we are in Chi2 box, all ready to be printed in a resin printer. And there's the finished result. Soraya Tech fast resin I used for this. You can see it's picked out how thin the lower jaw is and everything. It's really accurate. Very, very impressed with it. Did one with the uh, upper and lower jaws separate. Another thing I like to do is make gun stocks. And this was a hand carved pistol grip I made for a target rifle. It was custom built for my hand. There it is on the air rifle. I wanted to make a plastic version of the, the pistol grip. So I stuck it on the turntable and used the Morocco. And I scanned this from uh, different sides and angles. You can see it's uh, spotting the darker lines in the wood grain there. And this was the uh, scans being merged to create a model. And I've detected the isolated bits and deleted those. And we're meshing it. Get it all uh, looking good. Hole detection, select all, fill holes. And that is a very accurate model of the pistol grip I made. I then imported that into Mesh Mixer and I used the smoothing tool to make it all shiny. And then this model I put into Shaper 3D to remove the uh, precision parts that it needs to fit the rifle and fit the bolt through. Because you can't scan the inside of these uh, deep holes like that. So there you can see the cross section of it. I printed this out in ASA filament. And here's the result. Now this could be sanded smooth and then further smoothed using acetone vapor smoothing. So this is the Revo Point Morocco 3D scanner. This is my sort of long-term review of it. I've had it a few months now and I have scanned dozens of objects and people. I've used it a lot and I love it. It is brilliant. It has become my sort of go-to scanner because very easy. Just take it out of its bag and you're ready to go. You don't have to connect it to a PC to get it to work. It's got very good battery life um, and it's all wire free. You have the screen on the back so you can, you're can you actually watching as you scan. It's much easier to keep your aim and your distance while it's you're actually looking at what you're scanning. Much easier than having to look to one side at a laptop. And uh, with the screen, it's a really high resolution touch screen and it's got built in processor. 
So uh, you can actually do a lot of the editing within the scanner itself. Very capable editing software within this, especially since they've just done a sort of a firmware slash software update on this very recently. So if you have one of these, make sure you update it because it unlocks a new load of uh, editing features such as merging and hole filling. But really, really good. Only issues I had weren't with the scanner itself, they were with my MacBook not wanting to connect to it because there were programs running in the background that were blocking the connection. If you shut all your apps down and then connect it, not a problem. It'll connect via Wi-Fi if you've got a good Wi-Fi signal, which is the other option. But it is just such a good bit of kit. The uh, other issue I had um, thinking about it was I did upgrade my MacBook because I didn't have enough RAM on my original one. And where I'm doing more and more 3D work, the bigger files scanners like this produce, um, you need more RAM to process them or do post-processing on them. In this video, I concentrated more on the smaller object scanning in near mode uh, because I've covered people scanning in the previous two videos I've done on the Morocco. But yeah, check those out if you haven't already. But very, many, many thanks to um, Revo Point for sending me this and I've been absolutely delighted with it. And I'll be back soon with some more videos. Many thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll be back soon with some more videos.